Hey, blackout drill. Just what we needed tonight. All right, Jill, close the curtains. Ricky, turn off the lights. Molly, get the candles. I'll get some extra blankets. I'll be right down. Freezing. I wish we didn't have to have these blackouts. In case you haven't heard, we're at war. Yeah, we have to know what to do in case there's a Nazi attack on Jefferson. No one's going to attack us. The war's far away. Miss Campbell showed us on the map. Well, Ricky's right. It never hurts to be prepared. Exactly. And if you're more mature, you'd understand. Jill. So what was the news you had for us, Mom? Well, Jim, I think that you ought to be the one to tell the children. Now? Here? It's the perfect time and place. You're starting to make me nervous. What's going on? Quite a few of the younger doctors at the hospital are serving overseas. And their letters are very sobering. It's hard to read them without wanting to take action. What, what kind of action, Dad? Well, that's what, uh, that's what we want to discuss with you. Uh, thought about it for months, and your mother and I have talked it over. Dad, no! Let him finish, Mole! I've joined up. I'll be shipping out for England very soon. Gosh, that's swell! No, it isn't. It's horrible! See all clear. We can go back up. I don't blame you for being upset, Molly. But I'm needed over there. You're needed here. Molly, your father and I have thought this through very carefully. That's why he's leaving his family? To go to some strange country that's being bombed for real? Molly, the people in this room mean more to me than anything in the world. But there are thousands of our young men over there who need doctors. I have to go. I'm awfully proud of you, Dad. I wish I could sign up with you. So I'm going to hang a blue star in the window when you go. Well, lots of houses around here have them. That's something to be proud of. And the houses with gold stars? The soldiers who live there aren't ever coming back, so what's the use of being proud? I'm going to be looking after patients, Molly. I won't be on the front lines. You don't have to be on the front lines to be hurt, or... I'm going upstairs. I wish everything could stay just the way it is right now. That's a hard wish to grant. But look at the North Star. It's steady. It's unchanging. You can always depend on it. No matter where we wander, there it is. I like that. You know something? You're my North Star. All of you. Because wherever I am, all I have to do is look up at the sky and think of my family right here waiting for me. That way I never feel lost. Promise you'll come home? Time to say so long. Good luck, Dad. Thank you, son. Take care of yourself, Dad. I will. Don't you worry. Remember the North Star, Molly. I will.
Remember, Molly. Bye, Dad. I love you. I love you too, Molly. swift victory. And victory is the word as our allies win a major battle in North Africa. The great Winston Churchill arrives to congratulate the soldiers who have liberated Tripoli from the fascists. You know that pretty pink sweater Miss Campbell had on yesterday? I saw one just like it in photo play. Golly, who is wearing it? Betty Grable. She's my favorite. Tim, your word is helium. Helium. H-E-L-E-U-M. Helium. Sorry, Tim. <gasps> Molly? Helium. H-E-L-I-U-M. Correct. Yay! Keep working at home. Yes. We want to choose the best possible team to represent us. The winner of this year's Willow Street School Spelling Bee will come from this class and no other. And it'll be you second year in a row. The undefeated champion. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Off to lunch you go. I wonder if she's writing a letter to Lieutenant Davies. Of course she is. I bet she writes them every day. My mom writes my brothers every day. Anthony got hurt. Gosh, is he all right? He's okay. It wasn't serious. Maybe my dad's looking after him at a field hospital. I hope so. Your dad's swell. He took out my tonsils and didn't hurt a bit. So how's that day and night, night and day tap dancing going? Well, I haven't exactly started. You better get going if you want to be Miss Victory. I need to ask my mom about extra lessons, but she's been looking really worried about stuff lately. Stuff? You know, bills and things. Dad used to take care of that, and now she has to. That's not a mom's job. Hey, why didn't you come in for a snack? It's Grilled Cheese Day. Mom! We're home, I'm starving. Mrs. Guilford, what are you doing here? Your mother asked me to come over and look after you girls for the afternoon. Oh, well, I, I don't suppose she told you it was Girl Cheese Day. She did not. I've made you bologna sandwiches. My Johnny can never get enough of his mother's bologna sandwiches. Now, you girls go wash your hands and let me inspect them. And remind me to show you a picture of Johnny in his uniform. And then we have to look at an entire album of pictures of Johnny Guilford, starting from when he was a baby. There's nothing wrong with Mrs. Guilford being proud of her son. I never said there was, but I don't have to be. Something smells really good in the kitchen. I'm baking a casserole. No. It isn't for us, dear. My friend Doreen's brother was killed in France. I'm taking the casserole to their house. What difference will a casserole make? It's what you do to help a family in some small way during a dreadful time. Which reminds me, there's something that I'd like to discuss with all of you. 
I've taken a job. A job? You? Doing what? A nice vote of confidence for my children. But a real job? Oh, lots of women are taking jobs these days. With all the men away, we're needed to build planes and assemble war machinery. Assemble war machinery? You. Richard McIntyre, you may not know this, but before I was your mother, I could take an engine apart and put it back together faster than any one of my brothers. What job did you take, mother? Well, I had an opening at the Jefferson Aircraft Plant. I'm going to be working on the fighter assembly line. And if I hear one more thing, Ricky... Who? Me? I, I don't want you to work, Mom. We need you here. Dad's not here and everything's upside down. It's not just us, Molly. Everything is upside down for everyone. Anyway, if you're working, who's going to look after us? Well, I've asked your Aunt Eleanor to come and stay. Hooray! Aunt Eleanor! But before she can come, Mrs. Gilford has agreed to take the job, which, quite frankly, is harder than assembling any planes. Not Mrs. Gilford. Why can't Aunt Eleanor come right away? Well, she can't just drop everything overnight, Molly. And besides, Mrs. Gilford is a lovely woman. She's raised a son all by herself, and she's very capable. But she makes bologna sandwiches, and all she talks about is Johnny. Molly, we are at war. Everybody has to do their part. So maybe yours is eating a few bologna sandwiches and listening to stories about Johnny Gilford. Is that really so bad? Mm. <sighs> Mother! Golly! You look so different from... You. I wasn't sure how to dress for the job, but I thought this would do for the first day. You look swell. Now listen, I know that this is brand new for all of us, so I can use all the support and cooperation I can get, especially from you, Molly. I'll be good. You promise to be nice to Mrs. Guilford? I'll try. I mean, I will. Oh, that's my carpool. Be good. Good luck. Good luck. <sighs> Thank you. Golly, she's really working. What's this orange stuff, Mrs. Guilford? Polite children do not refer to their food as stuff, Molly. The vegetable that you're lucky enough to have on your plates is mashed turnip grown in my victory garden. It's one of Johnny's favorites. And mine. You rat. Quite delightful, Mrs. Guilford. Molly, you haven't touched your food. Is there a reason for that? Yes, ma'am. What might that be? I don't like turnips. It smells like dirty sauce. Well, I'm sorry you feel like that. Because anyone who fails to finish her turnip will get no dessert. Nor will she be allowed to leave the table until the turnips are gone. Did you know that Johnny was first in his class his senior year? He was offered a scholarship at three different colleges. Really, Molly? You don't want to upset Mother when she gets home. When Dad was here, dinner was always fun. Life isn't about having fun, dear. Mr. Guilford passed away when Johnny was just 10. The boy went out and got himself a paper wrap. Do you think that was fun? Just hold your nose and swallow. You hold your nose. That'll be your mother. If I were you, I'd start eating. Thank you, Gladys. You're quite welcome, Helen. Enjoy your meal, dear. Molly, what on earth are you doing? How was work, Mom? It went well, dear, but you haven't answered my question. Well, I'm supposed to be here until I finish my turnips which means I'll be here until I die. Well, do you mind if I sit with you? Not until you die, of course, just while I have my tea. Sure. Well, maybe I should reheat these turnips while we're at it. it certainly can't be very tasty when they're cold. It won't help. 